they're making humanoid yeah. style robots that are going to basically. How long is it going to be before they start carrying guns and shooting people? No, they got imagine like in the. Well, they're the already Tesla doing thing. it. Imagine yeah, in the Tesla, the... they have like a pop up like turret that is some like either AI or you can just aim on the touch screen. The Chinese there are investing a with lot a gun. in drones and have machine guns and other kind of rifles and pistols on them, and like RPGs and other things. Could you imagine like an artillery shell that you could shoot into the freaking air? and it drop about six or seven of those bastards anywhere you shoot the artillery shell, and now you've got seven armed freaking robots that never have to sleep, and they can just search and destroy and kill everything in sight. That's scary, yeah. Armor-piercing rounds. Yeah, humanity's going to have to learn to live together because things are getting to the point technology-wise where every country in the world is going to have the ability to, to create robots that can just you know, seek and destroy on their own and, you know. Yeah, self-aware. You could say, you know, I've thought about this would be a cool idea for a movie. Skynet, man. <laughs> a cool idea for a movie is that you got a, because, um, you know, obviously the Japanese communists, they don't really, at least the upper echelon doesn't. A lot of them seem to be, you know, thinking now is their time. It's their time to, to basically rule the world. Oh, the Chinese And get revenge on uh, Japan yeah. for World War II. Ugh. And you can imagine some cute little, like, robot dog or something that everybody wants for Christmas. And, and uh, it's like the size of a normal dog, but it can do all kinds of amazing things. And so everybody gets one because they're, like, you know, really amazing. But they're fairly affordable. And so, like, millions of these things are, like, all over the United States, all over the West. Mm -hmm. You know, on Christmas and then like at Christmas Eve, you know, almost like a Gremlins type thing. Or it's like, you know, when everybody's asleep, the, you know, the back opens up and another drone comes out. Maybe a couple flying drones go outside and sit. And, and then in the morning, like the, the dad gets up to, to go and maybe he's somebody in the government or the military or a contractor of some kind. It's, you know, defense contractor or whatever, a politician and uh, it just, it shoots them, and then, t t you know, he drops dead in the driveway, and, you know, they, they fly all over the place in the neighborhood and take out people ahead of time if they want to. And then so, you, you know, you basically have all these robots that can take over and uh, take out our aircraft just sitting on the runways because, like, everybody's got them. They're all over the place. Look at what they're doing with the, uh, the kids. Uh, we're talking literally like 18, 19 year old kids over in Ukraine that are taking these drones that have explosives rigged up on them and yep. just, you know, you know, do, do, do over the trench. Oh, there's some Russians freaking drop a grenade on them. Yep. That's just the start. That's they're putting the claymore beginning. mines on them now. Yeah. Yeah. But that's just the start of this. Eventually, it's going to be way, way. I think they, I think they see the writing on the wall that this is the future of, of warfare, and you know, just a regular grunt in the freaking trenches with an AK, you know, just may not be able to cut it anymore with all this technology. I mean, you're always going to need infantry on the ground. You always got to have boots on the ground. You're never going to replace that, of course, obviously. Like, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that it really forces us to rethink our tactics and to rethink like how we're going to fight wars moving forward. And to think about all this automation and all this robot shit that they're doing and an AI, all that stuff is going to work in concert and wind up making like a crazy super weapon that we're not going to be able to stop or something like that. And we have to hope that battlefield commanders will use responsibly in the future. You know, that's the issue too, is, you know, not using it as a tool that's going to hurt people and, 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 you know, not like a conquest sort of thing. You know, as long as we can keep our shit together and not, you know, we all live in peace and, and try to take care of each other a little bit, you know, then we may not have to worry about it becoming something that terrible. But it has the potential to do that. And, uh, you know, Musk had said recently, you know, that he has a, a little skeptical of AI in terms of how safe it is. And yeah. That, yeah. Know, he's always felt that we should really pay close attention and to the future of AI and, and kind of slow down and really take a look at this, not let it grow too quick. Like, let's really make sure this is not something that's going to harm humanity. Uh, more than it's gonna, you know, than it's gonna help. Yeah, because I, you know, <clears throat> you read whether it's Facebook or other people working on this stuff is, you know, they've had instances where the uh, technology or the AI starts making up its own language and talking to other nodes and things in this new language, and then they're like, not, they've kind of lost control of it at that point because right. now they don't know what the thing is doing, and you know, and then they turn it off. A buddy of mine has a machine shop, and, you know, he does, like, a lot of traditional stuff as a job shop, you know, back in my hometown. 
Well, he got into 3D printing and he found a couple of products that he could 3D print and make really good money on. And he, he ended up figuring out that it was so scalable because it was a really popular product that he would have no part problem selling and everything like that. He scaled it up. So he designed a couple of programs or something like that or wrote some code to make a 3D printer make another 3D printer. So he had 3D printers making 3D printers, you know, in terms of all the, the, the primary parts. And then, you know, of course, he could build them out a lot cheaper because he's making all those parts himself. So he was able to make more machines, make more parts, scale up, using the machines themselves to scale up, right? And then making more money that way. So, Well, that's fascinating. Yeah. So there's lots of that type of stuff. So there, there's ways that it can help us, obviously, this, this technology and all the automation and everything. But and we just have to be careful about it. Well, everybody is, you know, all, every country around the world at this point is obviously trying to militarize every kind of drone, whether it's a humanoid thing or a small tracked vehicle mm -hmm. or even helicopters that are full size that are totally automated. And they're just going to become more and more dangerous. And especially like a helicopter or in terms of something like that, they can carry much heavier projectiles, much bigger bombs yeah. than, say, like a small FPV drone like they're using. You know, basically running down. I've seen a, I saw a Russian soldier a couple weeks ago get. He's on a motorcycle driving away, trying to outrun run the drone. And this guy's flies right into his back, explodes. You know, <sighs> kills him. Dude mm. sitting there leaning against the tree in the cold ass winter, and his his uh, buddy is right next to him. The drone flies right in. This dude <laughs> blows and just <laughs> just you know turns him into a piece of filleted cattle basically oh my gosh and the other dude gets up and, and runs away and and it's like whew, it's just that's heavy and then you know watching the drones over the top of these guys and just dropping one grenade blows the shit out of them and he's trying to roll away and they don't know where it's coming from and then they drop another one and then kills that guy and the other guy's kind of wounded Dudes are running away, and the drone just chases them. It just Isn't runs that, them down. It has to be terrifying. It's like a movie. It has it, to be so terrifying. I could not imagine how scared I would be. Like, I cannot imagine. Look, could you, you would shit your pants. <laughs> what could you freaking do about it? Yeah. How the hell do you survive that? How do you combat that? That has to be the most terrifying thing a person will ever experience. And they got more drones now that have uh, that can you know see at night and use have yeah. thermal imaging. And so now the Russians are you know they, they can't even get any peace at night. And, and the Russians are doing the same thing. Yeah. Uh, but like we were talking about the other day around the An Antonovsky Bridge area that it, the Russians had blown during the war. Um, once they blew that dam, the water is a lot lower, so it's a lot easier to move across. And that's where they've got that um, bridgehead that they've been working on. It's probably at least four or five months, I think, at this point. And now they've got something like around 500 Ukrainian troops across the river and a bunch of armor. And, and I've been reading, yeah, and I've been reading that they reports that they're flying their planes and their helicopters over in that area. And so obviously they've and brought some kind of you know advanced air. You know, maybe one of the iris systems, I guess. Maybe a high Mars unit. Um, but some kind of air defense system, or maybe a Patriot system a little closer, or what, what, there's another one that Germany just gave them. But one of the most advanced systems, because I would think it would be in our best interest to take our best shit and you know give them one one piece of it or one system of it. And, you know, it's also what's a good way to test it out. Yeah, because what's happening is the Russians are... Um, I saw a video of Russian drones that were getting close... And they just get all staticky and, you know, and then drop and or immobilize because they, they also have electronic warfare that so far the Russians are not able to, to penetrate. And <sighs> they're keeping their planes and their helicopters away because, you know, they've shot a bunch of them down with the advanced air system. I assume it's got Patriot missiles. And plus they've worked to kind of make like a Frankenstein air defense system. They're taking like those old Hawk uh, missiles that have, you know they got a bunch from Taiwan that were like Vietnam era um, type of uh, anti aircraft type of that's good uh, enough to shoot their yeah. aircraft down and they've obviously they've updated it with new electronics and stuff like that and refurbished it and but it's adequate enough to yeah get, they're know, connecting their... all of these different types of systems wow. together they're taking some of our American missiles and modifying um, some of the Russian made air defense. Um, systems that the Ukrainians have, you know, because they don't have any more Russian missiles, obviously.
but they've got these you know fully functional systems and so they're adapting american missiles to be fired from them and so it's so many things I'm sure like that's that. Out well, right? Yeah, necessity is the mother oh, the... of invention.